We are starting Keith Hearing Projects, and I've already talked to you about um, him as an artist. Here's a picture of him with his artwork behind. A lot of times, oh, and you've already done the game where you've, I've got this off a of teacher, pay teacher, where you play the game to start uh, doing your sketching and getting your ideas. And at your table, I might have some of these for you to look at. Uh, this I got from another art teacher. You can actually just draw a stick figure, trace around it, erase the lines. Or something else that I got from another teacher, uh, these are little figures and you can move them around. If you look, I've already traced mine. If you do trace it, it will be a lot bigger than if you want to just draw a stick figure on a blank piece of paper, you can. If you notice, artists, these are primary colors. So I'm using uh, purple and yellow. And I have a black background because a lot of his work was done in the subway. And um, I've got this all set up. When you're tracing these, you want to be very careful. They're laminated, so I'll be able to use them over and over. But they kind of move. And when you glue these down, you always want to have the pencil lines down. It's kind of like for the big project that I'm doing with fourth grade. If it's not exactly right, that's okay. You're just going to outline it, and then you can erase it and fix it. When you cut it, you can also fix it. See how it's moving a little bit because it's got the brads. Uh, so that I want them to be able to move so you can think of how a figure and a human actually moves. So if I take this away, you can see where I didn't finish the head. I'm going to go ahead and finish the head. So I might be pausing and stopping this video. When you cut artist, I want you to remember that you go right on that line. You nibble, nibble, nibble. Never are a shark. Smooth out that line. See how it's a little crooked when I cut over it? I can fix it. You know, you're old enough to know now uh, how you can change things, a mistake into a masterpiece. So, also see how that's really big. Maybe I want to come in and make his arms a little longer. So I'm changing it, making it thinner, changing how I want it to be as I cut, which is fine. So I'm going to pause the video for a second. I'm going to have both of them cut out and then I'm going to show you what you're going to do having to do with complementary colors and positive and negative. I want to show you something really quick. See how the hand is too big? I think I know that's how the figure was. I can actually come in and make it skinnier. When you come in and do your figures artist, if you think the whole thing is too big, all I have to do is come around. Watch what I'm doing. I'm going to make like a little tracing all the way around on my figure and I'm just making it skinnier. So that's another option as well. Guess what artist I changed my mind. I'm sitting here working with this and I realized if you put it all in the black, you won't get to see the Sharpe that I want you to add to see the lines. Uh, because I found that when you add paint to black paper, it uh, stains, it, it changed the paint, changes the paint to pink. Um, cause I'm always, uh, trying things out and doing different types of, uh, techniques when I do my experiments, when I <laughs> experiments, when I do my art projects, what I like though, is I like where you have a floor and you have a background. So what I've decided is you're going to create two figures. It can be, it, it, you know, you have to have complementary colors and these are my extra pieces. Now, if you, meaning it could be an animal, you could do a Keith Haring animal. You could do Keith Haring symbol. Um, I definitely want to have a figure in there and I want them to be complementary colors. Now these are my scraps. Save these because you're going to use them. And you will get a three inch piece of flooring. If you want to have it be, I was going to say, is if you don't want a flooring, you don't have to. I don't know. I really like it. I really like the contrast. I think I might go ahead and say I want you to do this. What I was going to say is if you want to make it curved, I don't think you should make it curved because it don't look like a floor. Now, what I like about this is see how it kind of looks like if I had a figure that was hopping up and down, then he would be in the air and then the other person could be standing on the floor. So once again, I've changed mine again. I want you to have a black floor, which gives the contrast, and then you have the background of your room. Now, you want to make sure that you create the illusion. So meaning you don't want your floor to be like this where it's crooked you can see the bottom underneath it doesn't look super cool like that so you want it to line up against it as best you can when you glue artists and i'm gonna go ahead and glue this floor down and then i'll pause the video again uh with my kinders my kindergartners i call them kinders i talk to them about 
Uh, this is Mr. Glue. That's his head. Unscrew his hat. Sometimes you have to pick his boogers. Don't squeeze them too much. And we also talk about dot, dot, not a lot, or frame. You're old enough to do a frame of glue. I'm going to show you on this black paper. I have three bottles here because I thought, my chances, I'm going to get over here, start this video, and guess what? <laughs> They're all going to be stopped up. If they are stopped up, they go to the doctor. Mrs. Milligan will take care of them. See, I'm just doing this really quick. I'm not overdoing the glue. And I'm creating the same shape inside of it. That's what's called a frame of glue. So then I will set it, I'll turn it over, line it up as best I can, make sure both edges are right. And then I also talked to the kindergartners about paper loves to be massaged. Okay, you don't want to pound it. Now I'm going to do this as best I can. If I need to trim it, I can actually trim it for you with the uh, paper cutter because if you try to keep cutting and cutting and the glue's wet, you might mess it up. So just ask me and I can help you. We'll probably take a white, um, we'll either take a white color pencil or I'll have you write your name up above. I'm going to pause the video and lay this out, kind of think about what I want my scene to look like and then I'll be back. I'm going to show you really quick. I'm going to use my scraps that are from my um, figures that I made. I drew it on top. I'm going to set both pieces of paper together. Uh, you might be talented enough to do this. This is what I typically do. Hold it on really tight. Take your time. See how I'm very carefully making sure this paper is not moving. And then you could actually, this might be easier too, <laughs> cut out all those little extra pieces of scrap. And then artists, you can go back in and add detail with your sharp A, which is just a sharpie. Remember, we're fancy though in art class. And this is the uh, Keith Herring dog. Let me see if I can show you. I think you can see it right there, the picture. I'm looking up in my camera, I can check it out. So watch what I'm gonna do with these. Now, I know you're thinking, wait a minute, you just have the head. Well, as an artist, you can create the illusion by just showing some of it. If I can get him unstuck, now I have two dog heads and maybe my dogs, I wanna put the yellow one over here. My dogs are entering into the room and you only see their heads. So now I'm gonna have to move this figure out. Maybe he's laying on the floor or you can get another piece of paper and show where you're, get a bigger dog. Or you could use any of these symbols that we had from the game that we did. I wanted to show you how I have the frame of glue around my figure. Uh, plan out before because once, now see how I've got some over here and some over here you want it to be balanced. I wouldn't want to get them really close. Uh, maybe I want him, I like this because see how it takes up this whole area. Then I just rub my fingers around. If we get glue on our hands, I tell my kinders once again, it's no big deal. Just rub your fingers together, it's like magic. Uh, now what you're going to do next, artist, is you're going to take your sharp A, and where it's white, you're going to add an outline. You will not need to add an outline over here, but once again, like I said, you could add your detail using the sharp A as long as this isn't wet. And I like the opposite where I have um, the uh, where they're facing opposite, but they're also uh, it's purple and then yellow complementary colors. So what I was trying to say is you're going to go in around right on that edge. I'm going to lift up the paper here in just a second. You don't want to leave any white spaces on this. There you go. Can you see it? And then when I get to the black paper, I can stop and I don't have to outline it. And you want to make sure that you don't get it on your figure here. Uh, there was one, a couple, oh, He's also known for these little movement marks, so you want to add those to your pictures as well. I want to show you the last part. Um, I did not think this through. I went ahead and put my name up top, but I want to show you where I made a mistake. For if you want to add other things with your scrap, um, I want to have the contrast, the opposite, where this side is purple, and I want to have a yellow sun. The problem is I have my name already there. So when you look at my example in the classroom artist, you might be able to see my name underneath. But if I wouldn't have told you this, 
maybe you would know it wasn't there. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to bump my camera. And then I took a scrap, and what is the, I'm all about opposites here. Then I have my moon on the other side. I'm gonna place my moon over here. And then to me, the uh, picture looks balanced. I count to 10, massage it, make sure it's good. I've taken my black Sharpe. You wanna make sure that it's dry. See this other little mistake here, my glue wasn't dry and I got too close to it and I messed up the Sharpe and it made it kind of like dry out here. So I like to point out the mistakes that I make so you don't make those mistakes as well. Uh, really excited to see about what your Keith Herring uh, complimentary cutout paper compositions turn out like.